In this lesson, we want to take a look at the gradient tool a little bit more closely. Um, the first thing we want to do is we want to go to the gradient tool itself. It's here in the, about the middle of the, uh, the toolbox. There you go. It's right there. And when we uh, click on that, of course, what we end up with is, uh, with as with all the tools, uh, the options bar um, changes to show things that relate to uh, the gradient tool. So um, let's take a look at what we have here. First off, um, we have the um, gradient editor right here above the three little color buttons. And we're going to come back to this here in just a second um, to access the gradient editor. But first, um, uh, Photoshop has uh, several, actually five different styles of gradients. So you have those here and you can pick any of them. I think the little icons are fairly self-explanatory. Then um, next to that we have this group of filters I talked about in the layers palette, the same group of filters that affects how the pixels of the different layers um, interact in this case when you apply a gradient and um, so these are here. Then we have um, uh, the opacity, the overall uh, transparency or opacity of the uh, gradient as it is applied. So um, there you have it. Um, generally uh, to go to the gradient editor to make some changes and things we go right up here uh, to the uh, the gradient editor and we simply click on it and that brings it up on the screen and here it is and uh, once again if you've uh, worked with uh, the gradient in Illustrator it has all of the same basic functions but it has some additional uh, tools and uh, things that make it a little bit deeper so let's take a look the first thing is um, I had mentioned in the previous video um, whatever your f foreground and background colors are at any time, right now mine are defaulted to the black and white, um, that is what the first gradient in the gradient editor here will always be, whatever the foreground background colors are at the time that you go to the gradient editor. So that's a, a good thing to uh, be aware of. Then um, I'm going to click on one of these others here. There you go and um, let's take a closer look at it. Um, on the bottom we have uh, the little paint buckets. The paint buckets are where we add color and um, I'm going to assume that uh, let's start from square one and not assume that you are familiar with Illustrator and so um, these um, are the paint or the sources of the color and uh, you can double click on these little what I call paint buckets okay and it takes you to the gradient um, uh, colors or really to the, the color picker and so we can here at any point pick a color say okay and there it is um, we can um, add um, additional buckets um, or areas of color at any time um, just by clicking anywhere underneath the uh, color bar here, we click and we can add another uh, source of color or another bucket. And again, we can either click on it here, we can uh, click uh, here. Both places would take us to the gradient editor. And I'll pick another color, I'll say OK. And now you see you've got uh, an additional color. We can remove. Um, paint buckets by simply pulling, clicking and pulling straight down and they disappear. And again, we can add new ones at any time just by clicking underneath. And um, then to um, make some edits or to uh, change how it behaves, we've got a couple of different things we can do. One is we can always slide the bucket of paint itself left and right as you can see and that's going to uh, change how it looks and behaves and then you always have one of these little 
uh, diamonds, these diamonds in between each pair, like in this case from red to green, that's one pair, and then the green to blue is another pair, and there's a diamond in between. And the diamond is where one color starts and the other color stops. And so by moving that, you can see you either get a softer or a much harder edge. And so by moving the diamond as well as moving the, the paint bucket itself, we can um, make changes and um, edit it more or less. You've also got uh, a couple of little things here. Noise adds sort of speckling uh, to the gradient and um, that's another thing that we can do. And um, when we want to then capture the uh, gradient in with uh, our swatches, um, unlike Illustrator where you drag it, um, what you do here is you click the, the new button the new button. We can name it, but I must admit I usually don't bother, but we can if we like. Click it, the new button, and there you see our gradient has been captured. Now, um, there's another aspect to um, the gradients in Photoshop, and that is that we can add um, uh, transparency into the gradient, into different areas of the gradient. That's what these little buckets on the top side of the color bar are for. Um, right now, um, each of these on top, it says opacity at 100%, meaning that we have the solid color. So let's um, go here. I'm going to say OK for a second. And um, I'm going to create a new blank layer. OK. All right got a blank new layer and um, I'm going to go ahead and apply the gradient and um, here uh, we just simply click and drag it across the screen and there you see the gradient applied and it of course is um, opaque opaque and so it completely covered up the imagery underneath it we can um, play with the opacity here as we apply the gradient. This will affect um, when we apply it. I'm going to select all of it and delete it. And, um, and now I lower the opacity up here in the options bar. And so when I apply it, there you see it's not opaque. It's um, a 42% um, transparency. So we can see through it but it's even across the entire gradient, all right?